Practice playing with finger picks. Hey, I got people watching. Oh, it's going to be hard to type with finger picks. Can you hear me? I was having a hard time getting the mic to work through. Cool. I got practicing with finger picks. I don't usually use finger picks except for like banjo and dobro. But but I like the little clicky sound I get. I'm doing well. Thank you. How are you guys doing? How's everybody doing? Where are we? I'm in Los Angeles and it's seven, almost 7.30 here. I'm going to keep a guitar in my hand just in case. Uh, it's almost 7.30 here and I'm just curious who's up. Oh, Vancouver. I love Vancouver. Oh my gosh. I had my first Cuban cigar in Vancouver <laughs> it was, and I got a Churchill like an idiot. So it was like this giant cigar. And we went walking on Robson Street, and uh, we were walking on Robson Street, which is just packed. At the time, this was 1997, I think. Uh, it was packed with really cool record stores and bars and great restaurants. Oh my gosh, great restaurants and uh, all sorts of uh, great stuff. And I'm we're walking. We walk about two miles, and I'm smoking on a cigar, and I'm trying to keep it lit. So I'm only taking little little puffs, like so. I'm not breathing for this two miles, and I pass out. We're in uh, Stanley Park, and we get to Stanley Park, and I pass out, and all of my friends are just standing around me, laughing at me because I'm like green from my first cigar. But okay, so uh, let's see, Brazil. It's what time? This is this is amazing. Uh, we got Norway, Canada. We've got Australia. Are you kidding me, Waco? This is awesome, you guys. <laughs> yeah, Stanley Park is amazing. He was well, I was there at night, so I, and I was passed out, so I don't remember it. I hadn't been drinking. It was just, it was just the cigar that did it to me. But uh, that's that's what I get. So anyway, I'm just, I, I'm just checking out this whole streaming thing. I don't really have a plan. I'm sorry. I just, uh, uh, just was trying to get it to work, and I was using, trying to use my. Um, Logic setup and uh, my duet, um, Apogee duet, which is what I use for all my recording. And um, I uh, couldn't seem to get it to kind of go through into the, the setup here on, on uh, YouTube. So I just, I'm using the microphone built in as well as the camera, obviously. And I'm working on getting my camera skills a little bit better. I apologize. There's been some issues with some of my videos. Um, for one thing, I wasn't shooting in 1080 and I wasn't shooting 24 frames. For some reason in my head, I thought the more frames, the better quality. But actually the truth is it's 24 frames is standard. And for some reason, I, I forget, I, I think I was doing 60 frames or something like that. And so in the compression that YouTube does and that iMovie does, I think it was just getting jacked up. So I'm gonna try to be a little bit more on top of it. So let's see, do we have any questions? Okay. Good to know. Thanks. I don't generally swear anyway, but did I, I may have. <laughs> but we got the whole world is here. We should have a jam session. Mm -hmm. 
Do I like Nick Drake? Boy, I, I know the name. I'm trying to think. It's songwriter, right? <laughs> oh, do I play other stringed instruments? Yes, I play a lot of different stringed instruments. Um, I don't have many here right now out in here. Um, you can see this is, we just, we're in a new home, bought our first home. Uh, we were in the same apartment. All those other videos were in our apartment in Pasadena, and uh, we were there for 31 and a half years. And uh, we were man I was managing the building, so we were getting free rent in a great area. So hard to pass up, but we were, I managed for 25 years. I'm giving you my life story right now. Um, and uh, so I ended up, uh, um, we, we just saved and saved and saved and, and managing allowed me to stay in the music business. Much, much of what I'm doing now, you know, didn't really start happening until I was in my forties. You know, he was talking about being relaxed and playing. I, I, uh, I get nervous too. I, I'm playing with a, I'm playing with a band in a couple of weeks, and I'm a little nervous about it. But I've been listening to the tunes. I kind of have a, I set them all up, all ten tunes into a one session in Logic, so that I can every day just sit down and listen to all ten of them and kind of jam along, so I can feel like I uh, was part of the band. So. Uh, let's see what's going on. Let's see. Oh, you talk about what? Oh, Justin, you talking about the, the managing? Actually, my son, I my son, uh, my both my sons are taking over the management of the building. So, um, so that's um, that's where that's <laughs> that was just a natural progression. They grew up. They were born in that building. It's crazy. Let's see. Um, Oh, the, a string of performance. I don't know. It, it may be. It's going to be at the Canyon Club uh, in Los Angeles area. Uh, in this, um, the the I'm playing guitar. It's a, a great keyboard player named C.J. Vanston on keys. Uh, this is July 12th at the Canyon Club, and the band is called King of Hearts. And there's I, I was looking up on YouTube, and there's several bands called King of Hearts, but. Uh, C.J. Vanston is the music director for Spinal Tap, of all things. And he also played with Joe Cocker for years. He's an amazing keyboard player. And then also, hey, Zach, <laughs> how you doing? And then, uh, let's see, I'm uh, and John Patitucci is playing bass. I don't know if you know who he is, but look him up. And Keith Carlock is playing drums. And now you know why I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. So John Patitucci played, when he was a kid, he was playing with Chick Corea in the electric band. Um, and then John or Keith Carlock plays drums for Steely Dan and John Mayer and all sorts of people. Yeah, uh, C, uh, CJ Vanston uh, was, I don't know if he was, C, if he was Joe Cocker's music director or if he just played keys for him, probably was his music director. I had to moderate that comment, Justin. <laughs> it's so funny. <clears throat> yeah, right, Zach. Thank you. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I know the tunes. Except those guys all played on the record. Uh, the sad truth is the the guitar player that was an original member of the band had a stroke a few, few a couple months ago. So that's why they called me to uh, to play on it. So I'm hoping it'll uh, it'll it'll I hope I'm hoping I can live up to the record. I've been listening to it. It's a really good, it's an interesting record. It, it's kind of all over the map. There's like very, very California rock. And it's also, there's, there's a um, uh, very Toto type song in it, which is perfect. And uh, there's even a song, I think it's in seven, which will be fun. But I was worried when I saw Patitucci and Carlock was been the band, I was worried it was going to be real progressive and heavyweight jazz stuff. And fortunately it's actually pretty, Pretty straight ahead rock. Wadu uh, Kel uh, uh, is definitely playing out. In fact, he plays a lot in, dang, there's a club in Thousand Oaks or somewhere, but they, he's got a band. I think if you go to his, uh, he's probably got a Facebook page where he talks about it. Uh, my friend, the the engineer at my church runs sound at this at this club that Wadi plays at all the time with his band. And he says they're really loud. <laughs> 
Let's see. What do I say? I don't remember seeing you with any nylon video on the channel. I do play nylon. Hold on. Um, let me get it. It's right here. It's probably not tuned. <laughs> classical guitar teacher in college taught me how to tune my classical guitar basically he said to basically tune the octaves so like uh, to get the low E string in tune and then tune up the octaves get the E on the fourth string and then the sixth uh, the G tune the G the low G to the high G and then then tune the, the low A to the A on the second fret of the G string. It's kind of a weird way to tune. And then play the B and then hit the B string. But I, and then do the same thing, D to down to the D. And then E up to the E. I find that it's... I was studying flamenco for a while because I really wanted to get good at it. I decided I'm probably going to have to just live another life and be a flamenco guitarist. Uh. Yeah, so this is an Asturias. I bought this in the 80s um, from maybe it was early, early 90s. I needed a decent classical guitar, and it it was uh, had a crack in the top that John Carruthers repaired, and I'll be darned if I haven't played it for um, all this time, and it's not really gotten any worse. I mean, there's a couple – there's a ding here. If you can see this this scratch right here, you can see the crack. You can see the scratch right below that. You see that? I, I every time I see that, I get mad at myself. <laughs> so okay, I gotta moderate another. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, Justin. <laughs> um. Oh, can I play a track from that band? I cannot. I cannot because the record's not out yet. Uh, but maybe when the record comes out, I'll do another one. Um, anyway, you know what happened there was I was playing at a friend's wedding. And I was packing up my guitar. I you know, had the case open on the floor. I set the guitar down. I closed the lid. And then I started talking to somebody. And then I went to leave and I picked the guitar case up. But I hadn't locked the lid down. I, how, I can't think of any other time in my life that I had have closed the case and not latched it. But you know, on the latches where they go in, there's that little piece of metal that sticks down. It's typical of most. I don't see a case anywhere around, but typical of most cases. Well, I picked up the case. The the lid fell open. The guitar went face down and scraped across that latch, and that's how it got that ding right there. I was like, dang it. So, yeah, these strings are, I haven't played in a while. Oh, 
of course, Joe Beam. Yes, I love Joe Beam. Uh, but I, I'm gonna. I don't want to butcher it. Um, Uh, okay. Sorry, I got to clean up a little bit here. Well, housekeeping. Hey, Fiat Fritz. Yeah, I have a lot of guitars, but keep in mind that they serve a purpose. They serve a purpose. I, uh, I for one thing, I, I feed my family with them. I uh, uh, do session work, and you just need a lot of different instruments. Um, and I've bought some that I wish I had bought, but I remember I got a call to do, somebody called and said, hey, would you do a session? We, we want to do something like, the, it's got to sound like the Beatles. So I went out and I already had a Ricky 12 string. You've seen reviews of that, or you've seen my um, review of that one. But um, I went out and bought a Epiphone Casino because I figured that was actually on more more tracks than a Ricky 12 string. And then I, so I spent the money, and then like two days before the session, it got canceled. And I was like, dang it. Um, and I wish I, I – actually, my daughter has my casino now, but um, – one of the things I've learned too is not if I don't have to, I don't sell anything because oftentimes I've sold guitars in the past, Les Pauls and Strats and things that I wish I still had. And so I generally try not to uh, get rid of anything. And then I also have a lot of guitars. Um, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show. You, I was going to do a video for this, but I haven't done it yet. Give me one second. I love cheapy, cheapy squires and Epiphones and things like that um, because I can do weird things with them. Um, this one, this is a Squire Strat that I've tuned with uh, just three low E strings. Right now it's tuned to C, I think. Yeah, and I definitely have some guitars, unfortunately, that kind of sit in a closet, like the, my Rickenbacker 12 string. I don't get it out very often because I just don't need it. But when I do, I have it. And uh, it's really a cool instrument. I don't know if there are any Ricky players out there. I don't have a Ricky 6. It's kind of on my long list of things to get. So I'm tuning. I got three E strings on this squad. Okay, this is – I paid – $89 for this guitar. Um, 89 bucks and just got a guitar center years ago. And what I did was I put three low E strings up. So there's only three strings on it. And I did different gauges. So I put, um, uh, I put uh, basically, I think, a 56, a 54, and a 52 or something pretty heavy. I don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty cool. But I do a lot of, I play on a lot of games. I don't know if you guys have heard of the game Apex Legends, uh, but I did all the guitars on that. Uh, I'm working on more of that in the middle of working on that. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I, so a lot of times, and I also, I think I used this on the Transformers, last Transformers movie. <laughs> You know, just put like a lot of reverb on it, a lot of just distortion, delays, and just go crazy with it. You know, one of my favorite tools is an Ebo, so I might have done that. A lot of times I'll take an Ebo and 
you slide. You slide, you know, just anything to get a weird a sound. I've done, I did a video on picks. I've got all sorts of different things I use for picks. Um, one of my favorite things to use is bottle caps. You get a really kind of... And then the other nice thing about only having three strings is that you've got all that real estate on the fretboard. You can bend the crud out of it, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that's right. The Apex, that's it, Matthew. That's the game. So you can hear me playing. You know, anytime you hear a guitar, that's me. Um, I'm recorded here in my studio. And uh, uh, Stephen Barton's the composer, great composer. And he's working on some really cool stuff he's got coming up. So, yeah, Zach, this is one of my secrets. This is back when I started my uh, – my uh, first, first it was the blog spot, which I called uh, on Google, uh, which I called Pro Guitar Secrets. And then it was my YouTube channel. Um, that was uh, generally designed to kind of give away all these secrets. And this is one I haven't given away. Uh, yet, I was going to get to it. I just keep forgetting about it. Anyway, it's kind of fun. I've got more. Here, I'll show you another one. Hold on. I think I, I think I paid. $70 for this square. <clears throat> so it's like I said, it's, you know, I may have a lot of guitars, but a lot of them are, it's not like I have, I'm not a collector. I don't have any $20,000 strats or anything like that. I just, I can't justify it. But this is a, um, so this is an Epiphone. Uh, it was basically black and then uh, it's got soap bars. And I had, I bought these pens at, staples that basically it's like they're like silver and bronze and copper color which is they're really cool pens and they they're totally they don't come off i mean it's like permanent and so i had my daughter go crazy on this thing and she created the coolest i mean look at that look at the detail on that i think it even says on the back it says i love you dad somewhere <laughs> there it is i love you and my daughter is very talented and so she, uh, I have a lot of artists in my family, so she got some of that. And so, so what I did with this one, because it's another one of my cheapies, this is a high strung electric. Okay, and high strung is basically it's the same tuning as a guitar, so it doesn't require any new skills to to um, to play it. Um, you just, but you do have to change the strings. So you can take um, a twelve, get a twelve string set. And then split the set up into two sets, one the normal set and then one the octave up set. And so basically what this is is the bottom four strings, E, A, here. Let me. The bottom four are up an octave and the top two are normal. So the top two. Right? But then the bottom four are not, they're up an octave. So you, it creates all these, like if I play an A chord, but open up the the, the uh, D string, you play open D string. I'm just, sorry, that's really, that's really, let me clean this up a little bit. All right, now turn this up a little bit. Let me come back to you so I can see you all. And I like to use these. Um, uh, these are the 
what are the Herco nylons, the West German. This is what the Edge uses. You can really hear. I like I like these picks, especially with a compressor. It really they really make the scratchy sound pop. And I do have a compressor on. And if I want to go to like a D shape, I could do. Um, I just play a D chord, but take off the first finger, and keep in mind. So this D note and this D note are the same. So it's unison, and then I got the G string, which is up an octave, and then the F sharp. You get this. Uh, okay, so I got a couple questions here. Um, what's the best way? to teach yourself music theory without going to school. I'll tell you, YouTube is great. Um, there are, there are so many great teachers of theory. I'm not, I'm not great at it, but I like to sneak in a little bit of theory in all my lessons if I can. Um, and one of the things I find that if you're not using it, you're probably going to forget what you learned. That's definitely true with music reading. Fortunately, I, I get, you know, enough sessions where I have to read music. So um, actually, this is my writing. But anyway, you get the idea. I've got a bunch of papers done. Um, but uh, so I uh, uh, basically um, think that you can pick up most of what you need to know for um, music theory. You could pick up on YouTube. However, here's the thing. <laughs> when you go to school and if you're if you're in a, an area that has a um, – uh, city college or community college, whatever, where you can take classes for cheap. I would totally do that. You might even be able to do it like a night class. Here's why. Because there's two things that they will do in music theory. You can learn music theory on paper, but there are two things in music theory class that will scare the crud out of you and force you to really get good at it. And that is ear training. So they'll play two notes, you know, they'll play two notes. Like, yeah, oh, there's my sound. Oh, there we go. And then you'll have to say what what is the interval, or they'll give you the first note. What's the second note? Uh, that kind of stuff, and that'll be part of you know part of your grade. Usually, it's a fourth or a third of your grade. And then the other one, the other thing is sight singing, and that's where they put music in front of you, and you have to look at the intervals and sing the next one and everything. And of course, this starts out simple, like Mary had a little lamb and. Three Blind Mice, and that cut melody is that simple, but eventually it gets really hard, and you're doing it in front of everybody, and it's really embarrassing. And when when something's when – you're afraid to make a fool of yourself, uh, you'll get good fast. <laughs> I find that to be true. Um, and then uh, uh, and then the rest of your grade would probably be something just, you know, paper, paperwork, you know, analyzing and things like that. So – uh, but I would try to find a city college near you to take a class and you'd find that you get better faster. Um, let's see. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I, uh, what was another one here? Oh, how do, I, do how many hours do I spend practicing? You know, I had for from pretty much the age of 15 to the age of 35, a, an eight hour regimen that I would stick with most days. Um, and it was varied from classical music to jazz to rock to um uh, exercises, things like that. Um, and then once I got busy, once the kids, we had kids and everything, I found that I, that really had to take a backseat, but I'm pretty much have a guitar in my hand eight hours a day. So if I'm not, I've always, this is just my own personal thing. If I'm not working for somebody, you know, doing a session, write, uh, playing something, then I'm writing music for one of the TV shows that I work for and create music for. So um, I'm, if I'm not working for someone else, I'm working for myself. Because that the stuff that I do for myself is is the residual income that allows me to kind of keep doing this. Um, so that's uh, that's what I so so practices. And I'll tell you one of the things that I do when I'm a lot of times when I'm writing songs for TV shows, um, you know, it's it's called library music. It's under underscore. It's under dialogue. Things like that. So when I'm um, when I'm doing that. Um, 
I oftentimes will write something that's difficult for me to play, something I want to practice. Or if I want to throw a solo down, I'll try some new technique or I'll do something or like I said, I'll, I'll work on my slide playing or, you know, I, I use that opportunity of writing to practice the things I maybe need to work on. But boy, as far as sitting down and practicing, I love practicing. Actually, I really miss it. Um, that's why I started studying flamenco guitar because it gave me something really strong to practice. And just yesterday I was transcribing some of my old Django Reinhardt, my gypsy jazz type uh, solos because I want to record, re-record them at some point. So uh, somebody asked me about the D minor tuning. I have not, I'm going to mess around with that. Cause I, I, I do like the D minor. I, I do like uh, the G2 tuning for pedal steel, my lap steel, which I don't have out. Uh, but I could kind of do a facsimile of it. Check this out. I'm going to hang this back up. So I, I, I put that string lifter on this uh, Epiphone Nighthawk copy. And um, so it's it lifts the strings up so you can see how high the action is here. See that? I'm going to aim this down a little bit. And I'm going to get my tuner out. Did I leave it on the... Nope. Oh, I haven't gone far. Here it is. Let me just tune this real quick. Um, I'm going to... Let's see, what am I going to tune this to? I'm going to tune this to what I call a, GT, a G2 tuning. One of my frustrations with open tunings, it's going to take me a minute, this thing was in standard. Um, one of my frustrations with open tunings is that they're all major. Or in the case of the D minor tuning, that, that who was it that mentioned that? Uh, Gary, Gary Schultz, you mentioned that the, the D minor tuning. The, one of the problems is then, you know, you've got nothing but major minor chords across your slide. So, I'm too, so I'm just tuning here. Oh, I had this up to open A. Well, dang, I could have fixed that <laughs> if I had known that. Okay. I could probably be better in open A than open G, but I'm, I basically went to G, open G tuning. So it's D, G, D, G, D, G. But then instead of having a B there, I went with an A. I got tremolo going here. Let me get rid of this tremolo. Why is there tremolo? I want tremolo. Uh, that's going to be kind of, well, we'll try that. All right. I don't know why I'm constantly down that low string. I'm not going to play it. So I'm going to play this on my lap like a dobro or a lap steel. Almost there. Okay, so my tuning is D, G, D, G, A, D. So what it allows me to do is, well, let me get rid of it. So what, and it, this is still not as high as I would like it. I haven't ever tried it on this, but but it allows me to bend behind the uh, the, the slide with my I'm grabbing it with my ring finger, and so I go like here. In this case, I'm going to G chord, B flat, C. But I can bend that second string up to a major, to the major third or to the minor third. So now I can have major chords and minor chords. So like if I want to be in the key of C, to D minor, to E minor, it just takes a while to kind of get used to the tension. Like I said, I've never done it on this guitar before. 
you can get some nice pedal. Pedal steel licks when it's in tune. Anyway, so that's kind of, uh, that's, I will do a tune, I will eventually do a um, D minor tuning video because I think it would be a lot of fun. It's a beautiful tune. Very, very haunting. Uh, this is my Larravee Parlor guitar that I use for high strung. So this is also high strung. Mm -hmm. love the clusters that you can get with this guitar that you can't get with a normal guitar. All right, I'm going to look out. Okay, Zach, you're out. Uh, boop, 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 yeah. I know a lot. <laughs> well, I'm a wise, I'm a wise acre. I'm a wise guy. Uh, let's see. Going to bed. Uh, take care. Uh, is that a Fender Black and White? Uh, let's see. Oh, over there. Can you see that? Oh, when I say, yeah, you can take, that's a, that's a $99 Squire. That's another one. And I use that a lot. Um, I got that one because it's got the thinnest sounding pickups. It just sounds so glassy. It's great for funk. I've used it a lot on like pop records and funk stuff. So, um, let's see. What's the most complicated chord? I, a complicated chord. Well, I know I, uh, I did a series of uh, cool chord videos that are, you can check out. Where I, and I think this was one of them. I don't know if it's complicated. It's just it's just a real big stretch. But. So it's basically an E four chord. So it's an E major triad that we're going to add um, an A to an A, which is the fourth one, two, three, four. Um, but we want to have the G sharp at the same time. So it's hard to get that. E and the G sharp, or the, the, I'm sorry, the A and the G sharp at the same time, so I did it this way. And, it, and something that's very easy on piano, I have a piano right here. Something that's very easy on piano is often very difficult on guitar. So I'm basically open, seventh fret, sixth fret, second fret, open, open. And then you can do the A one, it's a little easier. It's starting on the A string, it's open, seven, six, three, open. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, okay, more pentatonic and beginner soloing lessons. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, I'm looking for some new ideas. I kind of, I kind of uh, bounce around with all my different things. And one, another thing I need to do is I need to figure out how to create a different channel so I could have two channels, maybe one for the for the more pro tips and one for the beginners, so that you guys don't get notifications for videos that you're not interested in. I apologize for that I just haven't been able to figure out. I mean, I know if I can start a new channel. Um, but I wouldn't be able to monetize it because I wouldn't have any subscribers yet. So I'd have to figure that out. But um, I, I asked YouTube, but they haven't told me yet. Because I'm almost to 50,000. I'm actually gonna try to do a giveaway. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I don't want to eliminate anyone. Uh, I don't want to make it just the US, uh, but I did one giveaway years ago and it was, I ended up having to sh ship like some strings to Oh, dang it. Uh, some strings I had to ship them to like <laughs> Africa somewhere. And it cost like the shipping was more than the strings <laughs> that were worth. And I was like, oh, so I'd really like to not have to do that. But I also want the, the winner to be completely random. Um, but I do have some strings to, to give away. I want to celebrate 50,000 subscribers. Um, I also have um, – uh, 
uh, a, I'm getting sent a Voodoo Lab. Uh, one of my, my favorite pedal that I use all the time is the Sparkle Drive that my friend James Santiago invented. And they did a, a mod version of that. And they're sending me one of those that I can give away. So I'm going to do a video on that. And then I'm going to give it away. I may do either like two prizes and give away strings in the pedal or put them all in one prize. I'm not sure yet. I haven't figured that out. So let's see. What do we have here? Um, thanks, Gregory. I really appreciate that. Uh, that's a good, good tip. So I'll try to remember that. Uh, Suffolk, England. Oh, yeah. Nighthawk is really kind of a cool guitar, isn't it? Uh, my, it's a little buzzy. I mean, it's got a lot of hum to it. Um, I probably use too much distortion and, and gain with it. On a clean setting, it probably would be great. Um, but it's very versatile because it's got three different kinds of pickups. It's got a five-way switch and then a coil tap switch of some kind that allows you. I, I actually, there's a, I printed it out and I threw it away. But I had, um, there was this printout of the 10 different possibility combinations that you can get with a Nighthawk. It's really a versatile, it was designed to kind of be the Strat Killer by Gibson. And of course it didn't work, but um, uh, it's still kind of a, it's kind of a cool guitar that most people don't have. And the other nice thing about that kind of guitar is that you can usually find a vintage one for pretty cheap. So you can get an old one and have it around. It's kind of cool. Um, but in England, I, I, I've been to London. I haven't been to Suffolk yet. Let's see. Uh, and there's also some early videos where you had long hair. <laughs> you know, you actually, this is the shortest my hair's ever been. I don't know. I did a video a couple weeks ago just after I got it cut, and I joke about it, but uh, I stood way cl too close to the barber this time. So um, I will stand further away from the barber next time. And and the the, the thing is, I, yeah, you can really track the between the glasses. See, these I can't see very these. Are, these are my computer glasses. So if I'm doing if I'm doing these things, I'll be wearing these. But uh, between the glasses, every three or four years I get, and the hairstyle change, uh, the reason the hair was long, there was two reasons why I kept my hair long. One was because I was cheap and didn't want to pay for a barber. And the second one was, believe it or not, I did a video on it a couple weeks ago about sidelining. And um, the nice thing about having long hair, actors almost always grow their hair long between roles. Now, I'm not an actor, but I play one on TV. Huh? Okay. No, I'm not an actor, uh, but I do sidelining every now and then. And when they call you, they want a picture. It's the only thing they want. It's a picture audition. It's not because you're not really playing. You're just pretending to play. And so uh, I'll do um, an audition where they, you send, they want a photo taken like today. What do you look like today? And then usually within a week, you find out if you've got the gig or not. And if you've got longer hair, then they ask you if you're interested in getting your hair cut. And, of course, I always say, sure, because, A, it's a free haircut, and it's a good haircut because it's a Hollywood haircut. And secondly, if you cut your hair for one of these sideline gigs, it's a 50% bump in pay. When I did the sideline for Gangster Squad, uh, the whole team, everyone in the band, there were about 20 of us, they all got their hair cut. And they all got a 50% bump in pay, and we were there for five days. So it was, it ended up being a pretty decent check because that was, uh, you know, one of those things where you're, if you're going to give up hair, if you have to shave off your beard, that's another thing too. They they have to pay you for that. So, so that's that was why I had long hair back in the day. Now I just I I like it shorter. I think it looks better. So I just decided to go short. So there's there's some uh, hello from Cincinnati. Hey, I've been to Cincinnati. It's cool. Cincinnati is a cool town because they, I mean, it's weird because they built these bridges between buildings in downtown Cincinnati so that people could go from building to building without walking in the snow. But the problem is that all the shops on the street level just died. Uh, what's the, what's the chili place, Darren, what's the chili place in Cincinnati? That's a uh, skyline skyline chili. Yeah. I, I still do. When I make chili, I always do chili four way or three way. I always have the beans, the cheese and the spaghetti and then the chili. All right, let's see. Uh, what band did I used to play with? I've never played with a band. Never, no one famous. I had a bunch of no-name bands. I play my church every week, uh, every weekend. Uh, but but uh, that is not a band. Um, I do play, I've worked with a few artists, um, and I've done lots of live gigs, but, you know, just jazz stuff or weddings or, you know, top 40 bands. But I haven't done top 40 bands since I moved to California 35 years ago, so... 
Um, let's see. <laughs> you still tuning your 12 string, Gary? Yeah, you, yeah, Matt, Matt, yeah, that's, the, that's, <laughs> actually, I had a chord, I work for this composer who's brilliant and a good friend named Austin Wintry, and he scored the game Journey, I don't know if you've ever played the game Journey, but it's a very kind of zen-like, it's the opposite of a computer game in general, um, and he uh, wrote this chord that I couldn't play, I wanted to play, but I couldn't play it, so I had my son Alex actually kind of was, some weird, I forget what it was. It's like some kind of G minor, but it had like, you know, an A or something. And I, and I needed this note or something up there. So I had my son come and hold that note down so I could strum it. I also have, um, I love the spider cable. And this thing you can actually put way up here and get one note if you want one note really, really high. I don't know if it, I can get it open enough for a nylon guitar. But let me show you. I think you figured out that I could talk for hours. <laughs> Sorry. That's the biggest complaint I get on my YouTube channel is that people say, man, you talk too much. I'm like, yeah, I do. You're not, you're not the first to tell me that, but that's just who I am. And so I'm putting this spider cable on the 12th fret. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. You see that? And so it's got these little flapper things and you just, they, each one can push down a different fret. So I'm going to put this down here on the, First on the twelfth fret. Yep. Oh, I'm not plugged in. All right. So see that? So I can play an E chord. Let me tune it a little bit, but but I can play that an E chord with that. Now it's going to be on. Yeah, David, this is the first time I've been live, so <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it up. I, I, should I should I leave it up there? I feel like it's kind of not to my standard, but I don't know. It's pretty stream of conscience, conscious, like all of that. All of my all of my videos are pretty much a stream of conscious. I don't like to edit a lot. I don't like it when I mean I love Rick Beato. I love his videos. I watch all his videos. Um, he's really, really, really smart. He's a great guy to learn music theory from. In fact, there's a book. Someone was asking about music theory. He's got a book. I would recommend buying it. I haven't read it, but I bet you it's really good, especially for guitar theory. Um, I'm going to change sounds here just so you can get an idea what I might do, like an example of something I might do for this. I'm going to create some kind of really ethereal um, sound. Okay, so I'm going to grab, let me grab. This it's even called ethereal. So there so if you need I will literally put this on the guitar for one chord if I'm in the studio and I say like Austin who like you said he's a great score that uh, the game the score for journey is really good in fact I think it just came out you can get it for Mac now I think that was a new or PC but if I just need it for one note I've got it so if I need to make a chord like say you know like got the capo and it'll just do that but I could also put down two notes if I want to go B and G or B and E on top so we go. that's kind of cool it's kind of like a kind of like a high strum only higher so uh, so that's one of my tricks I love that um, 
So let me let me say I'm just going to take que- I'm just doing questions. See, so, hi from Chicago. My dad's from uh, was from Chicago, uh, Geneva. Keep talking to me. <laughs> Thanks, jo- Jonah. How do you say, how do I say uh, spell your name, Jonah hyphen Jonay Jonay? Oh, I bet it's Jonay. You got the it looks like an, a long A over the A. So spell it out hyphen uh, phonetically for me. Yeah. Oh, Dad Gad is a great sounding tuning. Going live once a month. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's not a bad idea, Gary. That's not a bad idea. And I could set up a separate playlist for these so you can go back and find them. Um, that, that'll that work. Uh, Brooksville Gym. You know, it's difficult to, or expensive to obtain a patent. It's not a patent. It's a copyright. Um, no, I mean... It's, it's tough. Copyright, you know, is kind of one of those things where you can, if you want to go to the extreme of, of, you know, recording it, sending it to the copyright office, I, I don't know what the charge is. Uh, you can also do the, like, what's your name? Uh, Brooksville Jim. So let's say your name is Jim Brooksville. Um, if you did, you wrote 20 songs, you could put them on a collection called Jim Brooksville Volume 1. And then send all those, and that way, and it's one fee. So you could technically copyright 10, uh, 20 songs at once, or I don't know, maybe even more if you want. But the collection of Jim Brooksville Volume One, you can totally do that. Um, and uh, that's why now, technically, I think the law is, on, and I'm not a lawyer, so don't hold me to it. But I think it's once you create something, it's yours. Um, granted, there are only so many notes. Um, and uh, so many rhythms and so many chords and stuff. So eventually you're going to create something that's like, what do they say? You put a, a thousand monkeys in a room with a typewriter and you're going to eventually, they'll eventually type uh, Christmas Carol or Dickens or something. Um, so it, you, you technically, when you create something, it's copyrighted. The problem is if you're going to sue somebody for it, you have to prove that you wrote it on that date before they wrote theirs. And that's where it gets a little difficult. Um, I, uh, uh, um, I, I basically, when I'm writing for people, I'm writing with people that are going to take care of all that stuff. So when I write with Justin Bieber, you know, Universal Music Group is going to take care of all those copy, those copyrights. I still keep all of my rights. They don't, it doesn't get them anything. It just means that the song's protected. Um, so, Oh, it's Jonah, just like I said. Jonah. Okay. That's good to know. Do you gent? I don't know what that means. Nice capo. Oh, yeah, you like that capo. That's cool. Uh, and it also, just so you know, I mean, I I, I, I'm, I'm, I do make a little, you know, I make money from YouTube, and I make a little bit of money from Amazon. It always freaks me out when I make get a check from Amazon for a few bucks because, uh, or it actually goes to direct deposit. But when you click on the links on my YouTube, uh, the, usually I put them in the information section. So if you're on the, if you're on a browser and you click on one of those links and then you go shopping or whatever, I get a percentage of that, the percentage of, of whatever you buy. So that's, that's a great way to support. I'd rather have you, I don't want you giving me money necessarily. I like the fact that this is free. The whole reason I started teaching these lessons online is because I stopped teaching private guitar lessons for the most part. I still do a little bit of coaching, for actors and some some recording artists, um, but for the most part, I don't really do private lessons anymore. But I did it for thirty five years. I started teaching when I was, I think it was fifteen years old, and I taught until about, I was about fifty. And part of the reason I stopped teaching was because I really wanted to concentrate and spend my days writing music and doing stuff that was going to generate kind of like an annuity, generate revenue the rest of my life, hopefully and possibly. So that's kind of why I stopped teaching because oftentimes I'd be in my studio working and I totally would forget that I had a student coming and I'd be in the zone and I'd be writing some piece of music and I've got to do keyboards and I'm programming drums and all of a sudden a student shows up and I'm like, Oh shoot, that's right. I got to teach lessons. So, uh, so it, it ended up being more of a distraction. Um, but I'll tell you, it was a financial necessity for years and I definitely made a, uh, you know, made all of our bills, many of our bills were paid by students, uh, me getting, you know, teaching private lessons. So, um, 
So that's why I like doing these because this just gets all that stuff out. All that, the, the what is it, ped, what is it called, ped, pedagogy? Uh, pedagogy, the art of teaching or whatever. All the things I learned uh, while I was teaching, I've been putting up on YouTube. Excuse me. Um, because... Uh, I figure why why let it go to waste? I want people to benefit it from for the forever for however long YouTube is around. Um, when my dad died in 2011, everything he knew about baseball and everything he knew about jazz was gone instantly. Um, I said this in my video in my intro video before, and you know my he he remembered every meal on dates that he had with my mom, and she didn't remember any of them. So it was kind of like. He was he was like the hard drive, the family hard drive in some ways, and it's gone. As soon as he passed away, that just disappeared. So this is my way of kind of, you know, uh, storing some of the stuff I have in my head on a hard drive for all everybody to benefit from, and hopefully, hopefully you're benefiting from. Um, let's see, David. Let's see. Uh, No, I, I, uh, you're st what are you stuck on, David? Wait, yeah, David, wait, did you say it up further up here? Yeah, I didn't. Oh, you're, hello from Vegas. Hey, you're in Vegas. I almost was going to be in Vegas in a couple of weeks. Uh, my son is going instead, but um, uh, <laughs> uh, Manny Pacquiao goes to my church and he wanted the worship band to come there and do worship the whole week. Uh, leading up to his fight in Vegas on the 20th, I think, or 21st. I forget when it is. Let's see, 6th. It's the 20th. July 20th, uh, Manny Pacquiao has a fight, and uh, he uh, wanted the worship team to, to come and do worship during the week. And um, he gets a lot of people to show up for that. So it's kind of cool. So, all right. Uh Oh, funny. What is what is this? I'm gonna click on that. Oh, the spider cable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have several of them. I've given them out of these gifts. Um, yeah, actually, I think I think if you go to any of my videos, I think the spider cable is in there. So you can you can. But thank you, Gary. You're you're a nice guy. <laughs> yeah. So on that twenty nine dollars, I kid you not. I think I get I think I get five percent or something like that. Depends on the item. Some items are less. But think about that. You know, somebody spends a hundred dollars at Amazon. I get five bucks. I love that because it's like you're going to spend a hundred bucks at Amazon anyway. And I really don't want. I mean, you. I don't even think. I don't think I have a tip jar, right? Oh, they do have a tip jar right here. I should tip myself. Show your support for Tom Straley. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you guys don't have to do that. I, I do all right. Um, I love doing this. I hope you know that. Uh, see ya. Good night, Matthew. Sleep tight. <laughs> don't let the bed bugs bite. Yeah, Dan, no worries. The, the, it's the beginner lessons. I had 8,000 uh, 8, subscribers. And then when I did the seven tips for older beginners, which is still like crazy, I'll get 5,000 views every 48 hours on that on that video, I think. At least 5,000. Um, when I did that, that's it, about a month and a half after that, somehow it got in. Um, that's where having – I'm learning about uh, – YouTube's algorithms. That's where thumbs ups really help because if a video has a lot of thumbs up, it gets promoted more. It's more likely to get promoted. So just that's a little inside thing. Um, and uh, yeah, Doug, the, the fight is not. Uh, oh, yeah, I can I can get I have a light. I, uh, you're right. The light is behind me. I'll get I'll, I'll work on that. That's a great idea. I have a, I have a light specifically for that purpose. Um, in fact, it's right here. But I, don't know, I don't know if it'll help or hurt at this time. Ready? Ah! <laughs> so what if I do? See, I don't want to look at that though. See, that's kind of annoying. Let's see. Now that. Let's see. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Is that? And now I look like Rick Beato. That's what he he definitely has a white light in his face. That's a little bit better. If I don't have to look at it. It'd be better. <laughs> oh my gosh! You did not. You did not, you did not give me, <laughs> Jonah, stop it. I'm not asking for money, but thank you. That's awesome. That's cool, though, that you can do that. That's really awesome. And it, it is, it's, it's kind of, if you like what they, you know, you support them. 
tips for older beginners is how I found it. Yeah, that's right, Gary. That's that's exact. I, that's how everybody found me. So I went from eight thousand subscribers to um, to uh, well, I'm almost fifty now. But it was amazing. That was last February. February of 2018 is when that blew up. Another thing before that, um, when uh, somebody posted a video, uh, someone posted me on Reddit, and I was trending in the guitar thread uh, on Reddit for a week, and I went from like 400 subscribers to about 1,200 subscribers in one day, and that was crazy. Um, in fact, at some point, I was. Uh, uh, planning on doing uh, an AMA, but I haven't gotten around to that yet. Uh, so I, I need to I need to schedule that because it would be a good way to promote this channel. I think. Oh, dang, we've been talking for an hour. <laughs> I've been talking for an hour. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's see what else can I do. Uh, I am going to do. A, somebody asked me to do a video of like my workflow when I'm working on music. Uh, I I couldn't do like a session necessarily that I'm, because if it's not released, I can't put it. But if I'm working on something that I'm writing for TV, I can put that, it's no big deal. You can see how I work. So I may put a camera over my shoulder so you can kind of see and I'll talk to the camera and just do a little track or something. Uh, I was working on one today. Uh, let's see, I don't know, that's, this is something different. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything right now because I don't want to change that. Um, and yeah, and, you know, and I started playing when I was nine, um, kind of, well, when, my dad was a drummer and um, my mom played piano and um, I, funny because I was really into the Beatles, um, I was born in 61 and my sister was into the Beatles, so of course I got into the Beatles, but I really got into the monkeys. I didn't want to be Paul or George, I wanted to be Davy Jones. So on my seventh birthday, I got a tambourine. And that was my first instrument. And uh, and then um, for my ninth birthday, I got a guitar. And the guitar lessons were super boring, and I didn't like them. And it wasn't until I was 13, I almost quit. And it wasn't until I was 13, and I wrote a piece of music. But I didn't just, it was like, I don't, it was, it was just like a deep chord kind of thing. You know, like. <laughs> simple like that and I but I wrote it out in music notation with the notes and everything and I was showing it to my dad and my dad said wait you wrote that and I said yeah I wrote it because you wrote these notes on the piece of paper and I went well yeah and, and that's how you do it and he goes that's amazing I could never do that and I was like wait a minute that is amazing my dad couldn't do that I could do it I did it so that was kind of when I started to get into it I'm going to do a series too about guitar players that influenced me. And I, I'm not a famous guitar player. I'm not, I never will be. Uh, but, uh, but it's, there's a lot of guitar players that, that influenced me uh, that um, many of you have never heard of. And so I kind of, I wouldn't mind sharing some of those with you. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Boy, with this black shirt, I really look like Rick Beata, the white hair. <laughs> okay. So let's see. Uh, oh, Okay, sorry, I did miss your question. Sorry about that. No, you're not being redundant. Um, I bet, so so the question is, well, you see it here. You guys see what I see. Uh, what's a good way to practice to be able to play lots of disparate styles on acoustic? Um, you know, I, I'll tell you, one of my favorite ways to, to practice is to, it, it kind of does, to, it, it works so many things. I I like to write. Do you, do you know that every single piece of music that's etude number one or etude number two, it's called etude. Or in you know, oftentimes in books it'll say study number one, study number two. Those were studies. Some of them are played as pieces and they're beautiful and you can entertain and play them at weddings or whatever. But they were studies. So I kind of took a book out of the composers that came 100, 200, 300 years before me out of their page. And I started to um, write songs um, and that would work on things I needed to work on. So rather than necessarily learn a bunch of songs, I would, I would create something. So when I say it was killing multiple birds with one stone, you're getting the skills that you would get by learning 
a, say a song, but you're also creating a new thing. And so you're working that muscle of, of invention and creativity. This is very, very, very important if you want to try to make a living in the music business. Uh, it's one thing to be a player, and that's great, but if you can be creative and, and uh, uh, have your content making, earning you money, then that's also a great way. So um, now um, the uh, uh, the other thing is is that um, sorry I'm getting texts in the middle of our conversation. Um, but yeah, so uh, you could try to write some jazz things in the jazz style if you you know what. Uh, so possible humanity. What are the styles that you would like to be able to play in on acoustic? Um, so like I'm thinking classical. I'm thinking finger style, but are you also thinking like rock and jazz and, and things like that? Or are you interested in playing electric at all? That's what my question is, I guess. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Jonah. Uh, concert on YouTube, background acoustic, uh, guitar strumming, which movie the edge 20 years ago? Oh, 20 years later, yes. Uh, oh, play that SG, uh, the, uh, the pickups 57s. The pickups, um, sorry, let me go back to the rock sound. No, they are not. I just did a video on this today. So I just posted it and I'm, I'm working on my video chops. So my, hopefully the video looks better. For some reason, I, 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 so I recorded today in 1080 and 24 frames. For some reason I had in my head that a higher frame rate was better quality, but that's not true, especially when things get compressed in iTunes or iMovie and then again by YouTube. So I, uh, so this is, these are, I did a video today. And I don't know how well you can hear this. But these are Seymour Duncan antiquities. This guitar is uh, is a total destroyed 1971, probably or 72 um, Gibson SG Deluxe. Everything's backwards. I'm not left-handed, just so you know. Um, but it, the, it originally had a Bigsby on it, and that was taken off. You can see the holes where the Bigsby was, and they put in a stop tail piece. I think this is the original. Um, the original saddle, but these are not the original pickups and it's not originally black. I've never seen a factory black SG. They may exist, but I've never seen one. Usually SGs are made, uh, mahogany and this was definitely mahogany. Um, you can see there, you can see where the mahogany is kind of trying to come through the, the paint right there. Um, but, uh, so somebody painted it, um, and took off the bridge, and and even the even the pick guard has an extra hole right here, which is hard to see on that video. But it's but there's wood behind there, so this pick guard may be from a stereo um, SG. They made a few stereo SGs, uh, but this one is was it's a '71 probably, and. Um, <laughs> I love playing this thing. And I, and I talk about it in the video. I love the. How easy it is to play up high. It's so easy to play this thing up up high where most guitars, you know, they, they you know, they're 22 fret necks, but, but you know, you, you lose, you lose access at 15 or 17 frets. So this thing, it's just been fun. I've never had an SG before. And I got this last year. I paid, like 800 bucks for it, I think, out the door. So it's, you know, it's not a, I just kind of fell in love with it. I wasn't planning on buying a guitar, but I was just in, it, I was in Prescott, Arizona for a wedding and walking around, I saw a guitar store and I walked in and played a bunch of guitars and I picked this thing up and plugged it in. It was like godlike. It was so good sounding. Uh, just through an amp that we cranked it. It was like, I even was live streaming with my son so he could, I could say, what do you think? Should I get it? And he's like, of course. So, so Anyway, this is, yeah, this is a great, this is a great guitar. This is one that I have here now almost all the time for the TV stuff I'm working on. 
and the TV stuff I'm working on is a lot of uh, just rock and blues and slide and country stuff for, for shows on Discovery Channel. Like one of the big shows is Street Outlaws. If you watch Street Outlaws, I do a lot of uh, guitars for that. So uh, let's see. Well, I'm, I'm losing, getting behind here on these. Oh, yeah, the F chord. I did a video on the F chord. Uh, somebody want to post a link for that? You guys could help me out there. Uh, okay. Uh, blues, classical, flamenco, jazz, finger picking. Yeah, those are all great styles, and they all, they all, you could, I could literally, if I had a thousand lifetimes, I would take one lifetime and I would just be a blues guitar player. And I would take one lifetime and I would just be a classical guitar player and one to be a flamenco. Flamenco is one of those things where they, they, the true flamenco guitar players will tell you, you can't learn it from a book. You have to, you, somebody has to gift it to you. You literally have to sit in front of a, a teacher and, and they have to impart that skill to you. And I believe it because boy, it's, it's one of those things where I, some of that stuff I can't figure out, even, even with the books, uh, flamenco is crazy. Uh, let's see. Yeah. The F chord. So somebody, Oh, there. Oh, no. Is that what that is? Oh, that's the F chord video. Okay, I'm going to show it. Okay. So somebody asked about the F chord. Um, there it is. Oh, it says I'm going to leave the site. I'm not going to do that. Okay. But yeah, so you can click on that or copy and paste that, and then you can get that F chord. I think it's a pretty good video. Um, that was because everybody has trouble with the F chord. So it was one of those things because I taught for 35 years. Every student I ever taught had trouble with an F chord. So I kind of had to figure out a way of teaching, um, teaching, you know, getting students to be able to play it because it really, and the great thing about bar chords in general is that once you learn one, you've learned 12. I'm going to do a video about that. I'm going to show you six, uh, six different seventh, seventh chord. Well, well, there's major minor. I could technically do 10. And then when you multiply by 12 frets, you're learning 120 chords. It's that's, what's so great about guitar. It's really just, very congruent. <laughs> Go math on you. Okay, let's see. Um, um, let's see. Just just checking for any anything I might have missed here. Uh, ever experience cramping in your fingers? Yes. Uh, I just usually take a break. I, I I'm always kind of doing little exercises to kind of keep my fingers limber. I, I don't really have any science to back it up, but I do feel like, um, that it, when I'm, uh, I hurt my, I hurt my hand, uh, when we were getting ready to move, uh, into our home, uh, I was looking at my, I have a big black desk in my studio and I went, Oh, I wonder how heavy this is. And I, I got my fingers under it and I lifted up and this finger popped like, I thought for sure I cracked the bone because it sounded just like that. And it was, so I immediately took ibuprofen. I immediately started putting ice on it and putting icy water and all that. And uh, it, it didn't swell too much, but boy, I couldn't, I couldn't get that figure. It, it was actually, I could do soloing and no problem. It was playing a C chord or a minor, you know, D those were the hard things to do. Um, and I got x-rays to make sure I didn't break it. And I didn't. Uh, it was just tendon damage and, and it's pretty much all healed, doesn't hurt anymore. Uh, but I was doing this thing where I was kind of forcing it because I didn't want to lose any mobility. So I was forcing, even though it hurt, I was doing that. Um, so yeah, but, but I, when I'm playing mandolin, that's when my hands hurt, uh, because the, the neck on a mandolin is so small, it just digs into my thumb and my, I get these cramps right in here. Um, so, um, that is definitely, that's definitely something that you could, uh, let me see if I, I don't know if I have my mandolin. Hold on. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave here. Hold on a second. Where did Tom go? Okay, there's a little cheap fan, Fender mandolin here. Oh gosh, it is so not too. But yeah, the neck on this thing is really small. Um, and I have it tuned like a mandolin. I, don't, I do have a mandolin guitar that's like, um, it's six strings, but only six strings. It's not six pairs of strings. Uh, the gold tone mix. Thank you. 
I love about mandolin is being tuned like fifths, uh, you can play triads really fast. Um, so like, so that's like a D triad, what is that? Yeah, D triad. D, F sharp, A, D. So it's cool because on, on guitar, it's really, triads are really hard to play. Uh, but on mandolin, it's they're really easy, like a pentatonic scale almost. I haven't had a mandolin in my hand in a few, a few weeks. Not my first instrument by any stretch, but it's fun to play. I really love playing. And I'll tell you, whenever I play it anywhere live, which is pretty rare, but occasionally I'll take it to church or something to play it, and people always come up to you afterwards and say, man, that was beautiful. What is that? They really like that. You know, people just really, um, uh, really uh, 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 just love the high. I think it's because it's high or something, but also because it's, it's just kind of this beautiful, bright sound. So uh, thanks for watching from England. It was awesome. There's the there's the F chord video. You're welcome, James. My pleasure. Oh, thanks, Don. I appreciate it. Doug, go to bed. <laughs> Four four forty. It's way past your bedtime, young man. Go to bed. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Johnny, you're watching in bed. That's just kind of disturbing. <laughs> I don't want to know. Don't make me moderate. All right. Uh, so anyway, yeah, banjos are cool too. I'm going to sign off. This has been, I've been talking for an hour and 17 minutes. I really appreciate you guys watching. I'll leave this up there. I'll probably, I'll probably end up putting it in a uh, playlist called live streams. Okay. And then you can revisit this later. So hopefully if I find that I said or did something that's that I shouldn't have said or done, I'll probably take it down. So anyway, I think everybody's being pretty cool though. That's the beauty of this. <laughs> nice, Dave. I, uh, you know, I should do a, I should do a live stream of just nothing but musician jokes. That would be pretty fun. Anyway, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is awesome. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk to you soon. And uh, I will try to do one of these. I will promote it better. Um, I'll, I'll set a time on it so you get notifications, and then it'll, I'll do like get, give you an hour warning or something like that. And I'll try to do a little earlier um, for the East Coast. I mean, I just was experimenting trying to get it to work. So that's kind of why it was so late. But I probably will do it later. So take care. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.